friends, this video on components of food part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now similarly, we might be interested to test if a particular food item contains fats or not. So you take some butter and if you are asked if it contains fats, so I think now you are more confident that you will be able to check it. But how? Let's have a look. So in order to test for fats, now fats are oily substances, they contain oil. Whether you talk about butter, you talk about ghee, you talk about cheese, they all of them contain oil. So presence of oily patch on paper indicates the presence of fat. So for fats, you do not need any solution or anything. All you would need is a piece of paper. So you take a piece of paper, put that sample on that piece of paper. So let's say you have taken a fried egg. So you have fried the egg in sufficient amount of oil and now you have kept that fried egg on a piece of paper and you wrap the fried egg with this piece of paper. Now after some time, let the paper dry. You remove the egg from there and you allow the paper to dry. What happens? You see that that portion of the paper where the egg was kept that became slightly translucent. Now you have learned about translucent and opaque in physics, right? So opaque is that substance through which we cannot see what is there on the other side. So if you have a piece of paper in front of you, it is actually going to block the things which is there just behind the paper. You will not be able to see things through the paper. But with through translucent objects, like through this area, you will be able to see slightly whatever is there on the other side of the paper. For example, a glass window. Even when the glass window is closed, you are able to see everything very clearly which is there on the other side. That's because the glass window is transparent. Similarly, for translucent, you cannot completely see what is there on the other side, but partially you can see. So here in this case, you will see that that part of the paper which was in contact with the fatty substance, it became translucent. So you can feel the difference between the texture of this part and this part. So this proves that the substance contained fat. You think of any substance which is rich in fat, whether you talk about the pakoras, you talk about the french fries, at the moment you keep them on a sheet of paper, you will be able to see those kind of uh, oily patch on the paper. Now if that substance contains too much of fats, then the oily patch would also be more. If the substance contains less amount of fat, then the oily patch would also be less. So for these, we would say that the test is positive. Now for various other substances for which fat test would turn out to be positive are oil, uh, french fries, butter, uh, the frimes which are fried in oil, deep fried, any item which is deep fried they are going to give you a extremely positive fat test. Those which are shallow fried they also contain oil but at least in lesser amount. So fat test again is very effective. Now you would have seen that this is the reason why whenever your mom prepares pakoras, what she does is she takes a tissue paper and then she puts the pakoras over there so that the oil which is present in the pakoras should get absorbed by the tissue paper. So that, that is why that is done. So that's about the fat test for various substances. So with this you saw that it is very easy for us to find out whether a particular substance contains proteins or carbohydrates or fats. So now that we have learnt about all of these three, let's test for different food items. So let's consider milk. Now when you perform all the three tests for milk, you would see that milk is a very rich source of proteins. So it gives a positive test for proteins. You think of spinach. So spinach also contains protein but not in very large amounts but in moderate amounts. You think of groundnuts. These groundnuts they contain proteins, they also contain fats because as I said, one particular food item can have multiple nutrients. You think of bread, so bread they contain a lot of carbohydrates so they give a positive test for carbohydrates. Think of rice, again rice also gives a positive test for carbohydrates. Pulses, they definitely give a very much positive test for proteins. Apple. In case of apple, we see that the starch test comes out to be negative, showing that apple doesn't contain any carbohydrate. So this is another example of negative test. 
So you will see that a lot of these substances will give negative test for other food items. For example, spinach might give you a negative test for fat. So apple gives you a negative test, test for starch. Potato, they are again rich in carbohydrates. So they will give you a positive starch test. Think of boiled egg. So boiled egg, they contain a lot of proteins. They also contain some amount of healthy fats. So some items have multiple nutrients. For example, the boiled egg, the groundnuts, even milk. So they have multiple nutrients. But we should know that which food item contains which nutrient and approximately in how much amount. So that we can uh, plan our diet accordingly. So that let's say there is a person who has very less fat in his body. So he needs fat. So that person can eat or consume more food which is rich in fat. So we have to know that which food item is rich in fat and which food item is like low in fat. And so for that purpose, these tests help. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.